Yeah, so if we just go up a mile or two and catch some scenery in the last few hours of the evening, it seems like that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, hopefully we'll see some caribou or a moose or some wolves. Yeah. A slush, a fairly slushy, yeah, ski slushy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy warm. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah it's, and it's been kind of like this oh. since we've been here, so it's a uh, <laughs> uh, retro roller. <laughs> Good boy, Buzz. The guy in the middle, he's almost 14, so we're going to speed a Buzz. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, line out, Dipper. Line out. Line out, boys. Line out, Buzz. Oh. I think we're neighbors, so we'll probably bump into you later. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like it. Awesome. Yeah. 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 All right, boys. Thanks. Okay, boys. <laughs> okay, boys. We'll find out. One of the great things about Alaska, or maybe not so great depending on who you are, is that despite it being such a large state, it seems wherever you go, you run into somebody you know or someone who knows somebody you know. I remember this the first time I lived in Alaska. I was stepping off a commercial fishing boat in Juneau and two of my college professors from Oregon were strolling down the dock toward me. I was actually kind of embarrassed because I was covered in fish blood, scales, and two weeks of grime built up from fishing, with maybe, if I was lucky, a sea green shower every other day or two. I stood there and I talked to them about 15 minutes before I realized how terrible I smelled. I apologized and promised that I would make sure what is to it? scrub those smells off of me before oh. I returned to class that fall. Anyway, for us, wow, yeah. this is one of the many charms of Alaska. This is a place where people are welcoming, but also keep a polite distance. Maybe if we come up in the and morning, this was reinforced for us on we'll this trip. We'll ski into the Matasta Mountains on our first night oh, staying okay. in the park. We ran into some fish and wildlife okay. biologists from the Park Service. They were setting bait and traps to catch golden eagles in order to place satellite transmitters in the birds. Apparently the mantassas are an important migration corridor for the species. Unfortunately for the biologists, they were having great success in capturing and placing devices on the eagle. But what is really crazy is while having discussions with the crew, we realized that one of them was a neighbor of ours who lives less than a mile from our place in Alaska. I feel like I want to wow. pause and just capture this view here. Absolutely. So gorgeous. So we're in the middle of three mountain ranges right here, which is one of the most fabulous things about this location in Alaska, because we've got that mountain range. We've got the Wrangell St. Elias here. And then of course, over the tree line is um, in the distance, the Alaska range. So pretty hard to beat that. Just gorgeous.
Oh my gosh, how could you hear it over my loud skis? Okay. Wow. So Caribou Creek Cabin, oh, it's yeah. like you can kind of see there's like a little knoll. Okay. It's all, you can't really see it's it's a kind of reddishy, but anyway, yeah. it's like straight ahead. Like yes. I'm just looking at this, okay. And then you can see a ridge line that goes yes. like that. So that's the okay. ridge, and then the oh, flat part up there oh, oh, okay. is where you did that whole uh, <laughs> my what, sound of music, your sound of music <laughs> thing. interpretation. And then that peak Fail. up, that peak up there, yeah, is where we look down into that oh, ravine, okay. and then down into the other side, and all of that. Oh is the divide that goes into the Yukon and then everything this way goes into the Copper uh, Copper River. Wow. Yeah. Last of the sun hitting. Oh, yeah. Tops of the mountains over there. It's amazing. St. Elias National Park, staying at a wilderness lodge and cabins. Happy and, spring break. Yeah, happy spring break everybody. Today it was in the mid 40s. Yeah. And it's obviously really sunny right now. It's gorgeous. We're going to go outside here and cross country ski in just a little bit. Um, we were just talking to the owner of the property and he was introducing us to all these different trails around um, that they've developed over the years. And um, there's hopefully going to be some caribou sightings, so we're really excited about that. Yeah. Thankfully, it sounds like bears are not too much of an issue here right now, um, like they are going to be at our property, but we're here for a couple nights, so we don't have to worry about it maybe quite as much as we thought we did. Yeah, um, lots of other wildlife, yeah. moose. We saw lots of caribou droppings on the road on the way in. We saw lots of moose tracks, and the owner said there's lots of wolves, so we're going to hear wolves tonight, hopefully, and it sounds like yeah. the aurora has been kicking every night, so that's going to be super cool. Yeah.
Ooh. Yeah. something on that slope that's coming off of that big butte there. Down at the bottom, just right above the tree line. Oh, okay. It looks pretty big, might be new. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to stop for a second. Just talk to you. Yeah. But, um, one of the crazy things about this trail is that like you would, like, you would not want to hike this in the summer. Like it's like dotted with lakes. And dotted you know, with what, sorry? Dotted with lakes and marshes. Oh, and crazy. It's just like super wet and oh. boggy. There would just be so many mosquitoes and oh so gosh. hard going. True, yeah. yeah. In this trail. Like you can see it in the summer. It's like already starting to overgrow when we were oh, here in like yeah. July or August. When we were last year. Crazy. A good thing about the changing seasons, you get to enjoy different parts of nature at different times of the year. Yeah, this is really nice. It's not too icy. I like how open it is. Yeah. Well, and it's also really nice because it's frozen. So, um, like the conditions for skiing are way better. Yeah. It was kind of funny reviewing our videos for this episode. I don't think there was a single take where Thomas didn't mention at least twice how hopeful he was for seeing some caribou. For us, caribou are such a mystery and an icon of Alaska, the tundra in the wilderness. Thankfully, Alaska did not let us down and never does. Last night, we spotted several herds grazing on the stubble sticking from the snow along the foothills of Mount Sanford. And this morning, we decided to ski into the foothills hoping we could get a closer view. The trails we skied on had been recently traveled by snow machines, so it made gliding easy and allowed us to cover ground quickly. Almost from the start, we spotted caribou and heard the distant howling of wolves.
dazzling, all those sparkling snow. Yeah. yeah. Could you hear the wolves again? amazing that they there's just even food for them mm. it just all this like, little scrub that's mm. open though probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can see like a herd of caribou over there, probably about a Half a mile, three quarters of a mile away, maybe a little further than that, maybe almost a mile. And we can also see and hear some wolves. And I think the wolves are actually hunting. It's kind of interesting because you can you see one moving below the, the herd and then a couple that are just kind of like sitting behind it and just kind of moving a little bit. So we're going to try to ski over there and get a little closer and maybe get a close up shot, hopefully. Okay, <laughs> yeah. skiing over the tundra. So we have a wolf that's just behind us on the trail, we just heard howling and some others in the hills right over here. To Nada Lake, set with 17 miles. Obviously, we didn't go that far. No. But how far do you think we went? We were right in here somewhere. Okay. So we were pretty close to that creek then. I mean, 
ish, I guess that Actually, kind of probably, parallels it for a while. Right here. Okay. It's probably where we were. But that makes sense given the. So we only did about maybe four miles. Okay. Maybe four miles out. Okay. Something like that, maybe a little over four miles. Okay. Yeah. Well, we didn't get to see Mount Sanford come out, but mm -hmm. we certainly saw lots of other cool topography and. Yeah, and just hearing the wolves howling yes. was awesome. That so was cool. super cool. And then getting to see them hunting the caribou and. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Time for some lunch. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, so we took a rest. We had some lunch after our ski this morning. We skied about eight miles. Uh, now we're going to drive down Nabesna Road, check things out. We've done, been down here before. We haven't driven down all the way to the mine. So we're going to see if we can do today. Um, there are some stream crossings, so we don't know if that's something we want to do in this vehicle <laughs> or whether or not they'll be frozen. Well, it's definitely going to be frozen, but there's <laughs> overflow. So, so you want to be really careful when you're crossing. Like This is true of lake streams, especially though you don't want to be crossing a stream where basically you got this overflow because then you could potentially hit a soft spot where there's rotten ice and then you sink and that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're not into that right now. <laughs> no, not in a rental car. So definitely, so, definitely don't want to buy a yeah, rental car. No. So, um, so we're going to see what we can see and it's definitely gorgeous as always. So we'll show some of that um, along the road as well. Yeah, this has been awesome. Yeah. Be bad. That's overflow. We won't drive through that. <laughs> this is as far as we'll go. Sounds good. Okay. Not how I want my spring break to end. No. All right. Nebesna mine, another day. Yep. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Hang on, I couldn't hear you over my loud it's skis. A, it's a pretty, pretty chill trail, it's like oh, okay. Lost Creek. Lost Creek Trail. Okay. Don't lose the creek. <sighs> I took pictures of it. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Looks like it could be a fun loop to do too. There's a cool drainage that goes around oh. in the future, good to know in the summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, it could be a fun backpacking. Definitely.
<laughs> I was going to say, this is really, really this soft. is really... Rotten snow. <laughs> And this is where these you think these are tillings from the mine? These are tillings. Yeah. Crazy, the pile up. Modern mining, what they do is they go through these tillings and they try to find the bigger gold nuggets because those yeah. are the things that would have tumbled through oh. when there's a glove there, that's hilarious. But they would have oh, tum geez. tumbled through <laughs> with these like, larger rocks and not got caught up in the sluicing. Oh, okay. And so like modern, modern, um, modern gold mining, gold panning. Actually, now they like yeah. go through these heavier tillings, and so that's probably what's led to these bigger pileups. Oh, okay. Is that they're okay. like you know looking for that too? But I think it's also some push off from water runoff too. It's a probably a combination yeah. of both. But it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely it's tillings. Like I've yeah. Seen it more than it's the same thing. Oh. Looks like a wolf track. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's wolf. Could be me. There's, There's some poop right here. Don't see any claws. It's kind of small. It's definitely not. Yeah, it's probably me. Okay. Creek Trail here, but it's uh, not even really a snow go trail. This is just caribou trail everywhere and wolf trail or wolves trail. Lots of uh, dead caribou carcasses along the way and just an insane amount of wolf and caribou tracks everywhere. So yeah, just super wild Alaska. After a big day of skiing, there's nothing like returning to a cozy cabin to reflect, have a hearty dinner, and relax with a good book. Can't wait until we're returning home to the cabin that we built.
some great reading. some delicious crispy fried potatoes hopefully crispy soon and we're gonna mix in the sausages these are uh, caribou sausage that is local to Alaska it's uh, two different kinds here we got like a just a general smoked version and then this is like a Louisiana oh. version extra spicy really really spicy and I like food that is really spicy so <laughs> if it's spicy to me is probably spicy to most people <laughs> and then we're going to bring the sausage into the potatoes once the potatoes are nice and crispy and then after the potatoes have crisped the sausage and all of that and all the flavors are mixed in then we add in sauerkraut um, this is this store-bought sauerkraut but um, Carlin's sauerkraut is what we usually make which is homemade delicious sauerkraut and uh, yeah we're gonna do some asparagus with that and it's gonna be an awesome dinner which we deserve because we burned a bunch of calories today skiing into <laughs> um, some of the most beautiful places in Alaska on the Rain of St. Elias Mountains. So, yeah, For looking sure. forward to a good dinner. Yum. Yum. Me too. Yeah. Oh, man, that smells so good. So good. Normally, I don't slice them up like this. I usually just put them in whole. But because we have a little skillet, yeah, this makes it easier. But yeah, it smells amazing. It does. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I love these sausages. <laughs> Sorry, don't need my eyeballs on. I love these sausages. They are the best. Seriously, they are so good. Dump those in. Mm -hmm. Give me a stir here. Yep. This is an after ski dinner. <laughs> 100%. Here's a seasoning we hadn't used before or seen before, but Thomas just put it into the potato mixture and it smells ridiculously amazing. True Heart blend, low sodium spice, so that sounds good. And it's made here, North Pole, Alaska. Yeah, it's got like a really kind of unique, distinctive smell to it and flavor mm. that's kind of, it's very aromatic. It's clearly got some cumin and some curry like seasonings to it yeah. so yeah i'm a bit of a foodie and i think this is something i want to find and bring home back to oregon <laughs> and definitely have on my spice rack when i'm living in alaska no too so. yeah it's got a little bit of everything in it yeah but oh wow this whole cabin smells amazing yeah does. yeah we're the gonna bring between the caribou sausage and this it's like whoa we're gonna bring the wolves in tonight if they if they haven't already been in. I keep yeah. hearing dogs barking. Well, we, we've definitely brought the neighbors' dogs in, so <laughs> they, they, little, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of uh, happiness for the for the pets around here. Nice. Oh man. Not get too many juices in here, so it stays relatively dry and allows the crispiness to be crispy. <laughs> Sauerkraut is chopped up really small. It's very fine. Not like our delicious homemade sauerkraut. That's <laughs> well, hopefully nice it'll and, still taste good. But oh, it's definitely going to taste it's good. It's chopped up as though it were like some kind of relish. It's what happens when you buy store-bought sauerkraut. <laughs> we're using it all now. We're going to... This asparagus is looking good in spite of the fact that it seemed to have gotten frozen. 
in our ice box, which is just the, a storage container. <laughs> just a little, yeah, yeah, little plastic box we got yeah. for twelve bucks, but that's cheaper than buying an actual ice box. So True. We'll throw that on our property. And, <laughs> and this does, uh, this cabin does have a refrigerator, but we had purchased that and left it out on the porch and. Yeah, it got down to, I don't know, 18 degrees, 14 like degrees that, yeah. last night. So that was, the asparagus got challenged. It's looking okay, although I don't know about the foam. <laughs> I think it's fine. Okay. I'm not sure about it this. It looks good, actually. Does it look soggy? No, it's, okay. it's fine. Okay. Wow. Did you put the whole jar in? Oh, almost. I did. Okay. Yeah. No, the whole jar. Oh. Yum. This is about the amount I usually put in. Yeah. And it'll sizzle up and reduce down. So, yeah. Nice. Yep. The presentation isn't that amazing. <laughs> It's okay. But the flavor will be. Yeah, it smells incredible. Yeah. Yay. There we go.